let's go to this conversation, though. Now, opposition parties, the EFF, DA, IFP, NFP, ATM, UDM and ACDP represented in the National Assembly held a meeting to discuss what they call their resolve to hold the executive accountable. They want the president to be held accountable as a matter of urgency around the Palapala saga. Let's talk more about this now with EFF spokesperson Snow Tampas. Now, thank you so much uh, for coming through. We saw that the speaker says that she still needs more time to consider whether or not to have this ad hoc committee and it, you know reading what you've put out as a statement post you know as you talk about these meetings and the things that you're looking for you are unhappy with that absolutely i mean there's no more amount of time that Senator Ramaphosa should need to answer to basic questions uh, the speaker is simply playing a long game trying to delay this as long as possible hoping that it will fade from public discourse and public conversation but uh, political parties met yesterday and they reached the conclusion that uh, we no longer want any delay or prolonging of this process. Ramaphosa must account immediately on uh, the crimes that occurred at Palapala Farm. The hiding of money under mattresses and furniture, the tax evasion that he has committed, the kidnapping of individuals he suspected of stealing the money, the torture of his domestic work and other suspects, and of course the concealing of the crime and the use of state resources such as a state helicopter, communication interceptor, to track these so-called suspects. And uh, there's no longer delaying this, and the Speaker is simply trying to play the same long game Bale Gambetta tried to play. She's stifling debate in Parliament, beating up members, refusing to establish Section 89 committees, and uh, she's running out of time, and so is Sir Ramaphosa. So does this then mean that, uh, you know, following that meeting, because there is a series of, of things you're calling for, including the public protector releasing the report into Palapala, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Does this mean then that we could see protest action like we saw during the Save South Africa moment? Absolutely, there will be a national shutdown to call for the removal of Senator Ramaphosa from office if the Speaker, in collaboration with him, does not accede to the basic demands of accountability and transparency. We're not asking for the sky here, and uh, we must uh, completely rubbish the claims by Ramaphosa that there's an attempt to intimidate or provoke him as trying to make himself a victim when he's the one who said he's going to be a transparent and accountable president post uh, the Jacob Zuma era. We're simply calling for accountability and there will be protest action to make sure that happens. And when one goes through, you know, these under commission report, for example, and you go back even to the evidence at the time, uh, Parliament came under fire for the delays when it comes to accountability about what was happening. So do you think that these delays, as you are calling them right now, that we are seeing, could take us back to a time when Parliament is seen to be lacking in its oversight responsibilities? Absolutely. I mean, Parliament was found to not practice oversight over the executive under Jacob Zuma. As much as the EFF had exhibited protest action within Parliament and outside and motions of no confidence, Parliament as a whole was condemned. So as the EFF and uh, the other political parties are coming to the party as well in Parliament to say that we don't want to be remembered as part of a history that shielded corruption. And that is why we've taken a principled decision as a collective to call for accountability, to call for consequences, and to call for an attempt to stop Ramaphosa from sealing the responses to the 31 questions posed by the public protector as well. So are you saying then, uh, you, you know, that for you as the political parties, this is another chapter in the, in the investigations? Or are you saying you have no faith in the processes that are currently underway in order to try and investigate the matter, be it law enforcement agencies, as well as what the president says is the integrity commission within the ANC? The integrity commission within the ANC is meaningless. I mean, he's disrespecting it himself. What we're saying is that the legislative arm of society, of South African society, must practice its oversight duties through the public protector, through establishment of committees of investigation. And that is all that we're saying must happen. Uh, we must ensure that these happen on our end as the democratically elected uh, representatives of our people in parliament. What happens if the speaker does not accede to any of your requests? We're going to take her to court. I mean, she has to be compelled through a judicial process to establish an ad hoc committee to investigate what happened in Palapala Farm, to make sure the president comes to answer the direct questions which he is avoiding in parliament, he's avoiding with the public protector. I mean, the Ramaphosa had to be subpoenaed for him to respond to the 31 questions. That shows a man that is reluctant to respond because he knows he's guilty. He knows he does not have morally upright answers to the allegations which have been leveled against him. So we're going to have to include our courts and hold them accountable. And if our courts fail, that will be a testament that our society is captured by an elite that does not uh, subject itself to the same laws that it subjects the rest of South Africa. And uh, Sinao, I, I, can't, I can't let you go because we're almost out of time, but I can't let you go without asking you this. 
What is your reaction to what we saw taking place in Kahiso? Uh, there was also, um, you know, Egurleni in Tembisa that we saw unfolding, um, you know, yes, in fact, Monday and uh, yes, and, and Tuesday. And some are saying that we shouldn't be viewing these protests in isolation because the communities are sending a signal. Look, we're extremely saddened by the four deaths which, have, which happened in uh, Tembisa. We're extremely saddened by the gang rapes which happened in Kruger's top as well and we're ahead as a society collectively and uh, we mustn't see it in isolation of uh, a failing government of the ANC and we must put it categorically as well that we must condemn the spokesperson of the ANC Pulemab for trying to shift their failures as a government to the people uh, of uh, foreign descent. I mean, the suspects were arrested in the gang rapes in Krugersdorp, yet we saw today people being stripped naked and beaten up after Pulemabe tried to claim that they are fighting for the sovereignty of South Africa from illegal foreign nationals who stay in shacks, who cook with primer stoves, who are garden boys and kitchen girls. It's irresponsible, it's reckless, it's naive, and it's an admittance by the ANC that they have lost control of society and now they're trying to scapegoat the social ills of South Africa to poor people who are uh, of illegal foreign descent. And now they, they, they are, that's the reason that they are going to apportion all of the blame of the crime, the poverty of South Africa too. It's reckless. He must be condemned for that. He must be rejected for that. And some of the violence that is happening towards people who have been stripped naked and beaten must be apportioned to him and the ANC. Now, uh, uh, one of the things that though we're also hearing from these communities on the ground, they seem to also be saying that the EFF should be taking responsibility for what we are seeing in these communities because of statements like opening the border, of statements like Julius Malema saying find creative ways to enter the country if the borders are closed and they're saying that that blame should be laid at your, at your doorstep because they say that these illegal um, you know foreign nationals are responsible for the crimes in their community so some are pointing the blame at you what do you say to that I think it's illogical it's not based on any objective evidence I mean in an earlier segment here I saw that uh, people were saying Zamazamas are demanding protection fees from them in their communities that's happening in Cape Town it's being done by closer people it's being done by colored people but we don't attach identity to that uh, claims to those uh, acts of criminality where people are demanded to pay protection fees but I think one thing we must also be able to interrogate with the, the Zamazamas in these mines is which market are Zamazamas interacting with because to trade in mines uh, in minerals or gold or copper or anything mineral resources of South African society or Africa. It's not like trading in tomatoes or cabbages. It's a mineral wealth. I mean, they have to be interacting with sophisticated and organized mining companies, not only in Africa and the continent, but in the world. I mean, Tiberius was guilty of blood mining in uh, Sierra Leone, in Liberia. So we must question who are Zamazamas being funded by? Who's orchestrating and sustaining illegal mining in South Africa? Who's benefiting from the illicit flow of minerals in South Africa? And if we don't answer that question, we'll never stem out whatever criminality people are saying is happening. We can't simply point at people who are the ground forces who go underground. Which multinational companies in South Africa, which mines? What is the role of Anglo Ashanti? What is the role of the mines in the platinum belt in illegal mining and sustaining that? Because these people are not selling these minerals to themselves. So for you, those that are saying that the EFF statement on open borders is misguided to say that they are blaming you, to say these people coming into the country illegally is because of what your leader has said. So is that misguided? You know, is that what you're saying? Bo borders in South Africa and Africa have been porous since before the existence of the EFF. People have been coming in and out of Africa, in Lesotho to Plumfontein, from Swaziland to Plumfontein, across the country. There's no such a thing as a border that exists in our minds. And there's no benefit of having a border. There's no verifiable creation of jobs that will happen from you building a wall. Because our jobs are not being taken by anyone. Our economy is not being controlled by anyone foreign from us in terms of the African continent. Our wealth is monopolized by white people. It is white people who sustain illegal mining in South Africa. It is white people who evade tax. It is white people who conduct financial crimes. So to build a wall between us and Lesotho is not going to change anyone's poverty. It's not going to put bread on your table. It's meaningless. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an illogical argument, it's scapegoating, but also it's based on the fact that we view ourselves as black people as inherently criminal, as inherently the problem to each other. So before I see that the problem is that the employer is the one who's sustaining the inequal employment levels and hiring foreign nationals above South Africans in order to exploit them, I'd rather blame you as my neighbor because it's easier. It's a weak enemy, it's a paper target, and that is what is being done, and that is why the ANC is taking advantage of it now. And I'm being asked to wrap, but uh, just very quickly, let's talk about the claims by Godrich Gadi that, uh, you know, the Eswatini monarch is linked to the abduction and subsequent murder of his daughter. I know that at some point you were the spokesperson for the family and, uh, you know, of course, that was during the, the funeral and all of that. What exactly is going on there? Because we even saw the Eswatini government coming, hard-hitting, saying that uh, they are not even going to, you know, 
respond to this, but also making those unsavory remarks about South Africa itself? Look, I think the family is best placed to know what is going on internally in terms of the investigations and leads which are being followed by the newly established multidisciplinary task team, which is comprised of crime intelligence, the Hawks, and the South African Police Services. So what the uh, father of uh, late Hildegardi tweets or communicates to the public now, he's best placed because they get briefings every two weeks. So, uh, but I do uh, think that we must be patient uh, with the family, we must be patient with the father and understand that he's also still grieving. And uh, whatever he communicates, he communicates uh, best placed with knowledge of what is going on. But uh, the Swatini government, I mean, the interaction with uh, Sakina Kamwendo, I think it was on SAFM, mm. showed that mm. they're, a, they're a society not used to journalism. They're a society not used to robust interaction with themselves. He calls her his daughter. He does, says very unsavory things. So uh, the character of the Swatini government is something we've long condemned. It's a dictatorship. But uh, things relating to the internal uh, machinations of the investigations, uh, the family is best placed. I'm told we are out of time. Thank you so much uh, for coming through. That is uh, Sina Utambo, EFF spokesperson.